a bit of a quick update, really. So I still think these notices of intended prosecution are all illegal because of Magna Carta, that no sheriffs can hold common pleas. Now, they've got sheriffs in Scotland who are kind of like sitting as magistrates to call them sheriff, but that at the... it was This is only since 2014. Um, and really... They've changed a lot around in Scotland. So, definitely, this 967 Queen Elizabeth, when she was younger, they scrapped this Magna Carta, which you can't do that. Now, it says that sheriffs can't hold pleas of the Crown. So you have to find out what exactly is or is not pleas of the Crown. Does that mean quarter sessions and assizes and, you know, serious offences with Crown judges or what? Well, interestingly, in the 1300 justices, 1300s Justices of the Peace Act, the earliest one, it's talking about the sheriffs in terms of, um, you know, um, offences, you know, offending the majesty, you know, and, and, and on, on offences as, as if all law-breaking is effectively against the majesty so but the the thing the one point to raise question about is that the thing is before the conquest before william the conqueror when we were still under anglo-saxon law they got these reeves, they called them the reeves, who are the magistrates. But that the word sheriff is meant to be sheriff, sh shire, sh the shire's reeve, right? So under the Anglo-Saxons, they had these shire reeves, right? In each hundred. And then you got this weapon tax, which is, the weapon tax is the same as a hundred, but it's like they had the Dane law as well. But um, I'm not sure what they were doing under the Romans, but the Romans had these vigils um, and some of the Roman soldiers kind of backed up a bit as well, but they had these vigils and they had like, you know, Roman law. So I don't know what happened to the Celtic legal system because they went to have got rid of all the Druids, but they kept all these hundreds and shires. So it must have, I, it'd be interesting to know exactly what happened under the Romans. But the, according to... The Celts, they had the the Druids, they had judges and the Druids, but they were meant to have travelled around. And it wasn't like the clan leaders or the king, but they, they had councils who made up the law. They were voted in, but then the judges were the Druids and the, it, they were kind of independent judges against other people's legal matters. But the Druids weren't kind of like police or anything such as that. I think they were just judging other people's matters, they, they, someone got a judge to sort the dispute out for them. Um, so the police, the, the, the juries definitely weren't sort of police, I don't think. So these Shire Reeves, um, but the thing is, after, you know, William the Conqueror and so forth, and then Justice of the Peace Act, they got, like, people to uphold the law they had like a lord, this is where you get your house of lords, the peers, and then they had like a sheriff and a few other people, but in each shire or area. But they're only really kind of like um, for the whole shire or county, you know, th th there's only a handful of them, right? Because the law was upheld by the citizens, right? You and cry, right? Um... You had to apprehend, you know, it was everyone's duty to apprehend anyone who brought a lot of criminals, and then they had to be taken to the Shire Reeve, who was the judge. It wasn't kind of like all the, hand, the, the heavy work, the handiwork, it had to be done by us, you know. Um, until, you know, really properly until the Metropolitan Police, I suppose. But, you know, you've always got, you know, Royal Guards and soldiers and all this and so forth in between. But so. Now, the thing is, right, going by Magna Carta and the claim of right in Scotland, 
There's a few kind of principles that are important and they set out in the law. And there's a principle that you're not supposed to get conf you're not supposed to give favors for confessions or you know say if, you know like you know um, get a reduced punishment if you confess you know um, if you get you know any reduction on your sentencing that will come from um, uh, mitigation um, uh, and your evidence and plea it won't come from that that's once you've entered your plea and after you know when it, once you've been found guilty or not then the sentencing and so forth it's you can't they, they can't give you a discounted offer um in exchange for you confessing right although we know we hear some courts say you know oh, they'll go on they'll go easy on you if you confess but you know if you're not guilty you know that that's admitting that you did it well if you didn't you know so um so you're not supposed to they're not supposed to you can't you can't have a wanted poster and then you yourself sort of like for the reward if there's a wanted poster right and they say like the reward is you know like you know 500 pound right you can't hand yourself in for the 500 pound reward because what if you get fined 100 but they give you 500 for handing yourself in do you see what i mean it's like you'd make money out of it so it's like but even if it was less than that you know you get a discount from the fine see what i mean so it just don't work it, other people can you know um you know, other people can but that you see if it's other people the reward that's the same as the human cry it's the duty of the rest of the village to hand you in now it, it, it was more important when it comes to you know like punishments like being hung or tortured and things like that, you know, torturing you to get evidence out of you. But the basic principles clearly in this claim of right that you cannot be um, the the basic principle is in the claim of right that you're not supposed to give over information or a confession uh, for a favor or you know uh, uh, you know anything like that, right? So that's one thing. Now the other thing that I found is the, the, the this this appears twice in the claim of right, and, and the claim of right is all about oaths as well. It says that, and this is to do with a conflict on the borders of Scotland and between Scotland and England as well. This claim of right, but this this is important because it appears this basis is it appears twice in there, right? Slightly different wording, but twice. It says that. The employing of officers of the army, right, as judges through, throughout the kingdom or imposing them, whereas there's heritable offices and jurisdictions uh, and the putting to legions to death, like allegiances and so forth, to death summarily, because, like, you know, like, you get summarily offensive and an indiction, right? But summarily, right? Because now you do some... We have summarily a magistrate's court. If it's more serious, it goes to Crown Court, right? Or High Court. Summarily, without a legal trial, jury, or record. It's contrary to law, right? You're not supposed to employ officers of the army as judges, Right? And, right, it says putting you to death summarily, but, okay, that's a bit extreme, putting you to death, but it looks like administered justice. Summarily is meant to be for small or minor crimes anyway, so putting you to death summarily, you're meant to be indicted, it's meant to be an indictment. So, but anyway, this is principle, right? Summarily, without legal trial, jury, or record, so if you think of Magna Carta 1215, this is in 1689, this. This is way after Magna Carta. So Magna Carta says that sheriffs can't owe pleas of the crown, right? And that pleas of the crown is indictment and assizes quarter sessions, definitely not summarily. Here it's saying that uh, officers of the army cannot put people to death summarily and without legal trial, jury, or record. Now this is the thing, right? The police, 
the, the police now that we've got after the Metropolitan Police and Sir Robert Peel form the, the force, the police force, we don't do any of the policing now, right? They've scrapped us, you and me, right? Oh, let them take care of it. They've got their own, their own force. I, I say it's a standing army. Now, the thing is, the police have got armed officers now. They've got an armed section, armed unit in every county all around England, right? Who's in charge of it? The police chief, right? He, he commands an armed force. If that ain't a fucking army, I don't know what is, right? The pl every police chief officer in this country is in command of an armed unit, right? If that ain't a fucking employing officers of army, I don't fucking know what is, right? These monkeys, right? It's an army. It's a standing army, right? Now, the police chief is taking confessions for speeding fines, notices of intended prosecution, right? He's getting confession in return for a fine. And the favour is that you don't have to go to court and if you pay it within a certain time, um, it'll let you have it for cheap, right? Otherwise, it'll go up. But you're not, you're not getting a trial or jury and a magistrate, even, even if you do up to go to a magistrate's court, there ain't no jury in there anymore because this took them out in 1850s, right? Even if you have a trial by lawful process, in a magistrate's court without a jury. It's not a court of record. It's not actually a properly a court of record, a magistrate's court, right? They sometimes occasionally make a record of a proceeding in rare or exceptional circumstances, but a magistrate's court is not a court of record. Doesn't even have proper legally qualified magistrates, right? So riddle me this, right? Riddling Reaver, riddling Sharif. Reaver of the Shire, riddle me this, right? If a magistrate's court ain't a court of record, a fucking police station ain't a fucking court of record either, and either is a fucking police ticket office, right? And there ain't no fucking jury in there, and you ain't getting a fucking trial in there either. Neither, none, nothing, zero, zitch. No trial, no jury, no court of record, and they delete all the fucking evidence after five years anyway or less, if you're lucky, and ain't taking no legal um, argument off you whatsoever. You can write, you know, you can come out with QC, KC, KFC, Piccadilly C, uh, or whatever. You, you could get, um, you know, you could get a professor of law to send something to that chief officer. He's like, eh, eh. He ain't taking no legal arguments from no one, right? Employing the officers of the army as judges through the kingdom or, not and, or imposing them, right? What actually is happening is we are being um, fined by force and blackmail by a, uh, an army uh, who is using blackmail and letters without a fair trial to extort massive amounts of money and um, also there's a word in the Justices of the Peace Act in the, um, as well that's um, out on the highways causing distress to people when they're just going around about their business the, the only distress that's going on that road is when the camera flashes and you get a letter through the post. That That is the only distress that's happening on that four-lane motorway, um, which is clear as I can see, which is dropping down to 20 mile an hour, and people are panicking or shitting the pants. It is distress. So I, I can't see how those notices of intended prosecution are lawful. And in Scotland, all this sheriff's holding court of the sheriff nonsense is since Gordon Brown and Tony Blair, all that tosh, and particularly um, seen as Tony Blair 
you know, 2002 congestion charge, which is also against Magna Carta as well. We're, we're being fleeced by these people. We're being well and truly fleeced against, against all principles of established law, which was well set out over a very, very long um, period of time, right? Even after the conquest, because they were taking advantage of people, finding people, um, intimidating, threatening people um, here, you know, as well. And officers of the army, even killing people. Officers of the army shall not be um, employed as judges, right? So as far as I'm concerned, I it, it's, it's not, I can't see how those notice of intended prosecution are lawful. And um, even if it's summarily, um, all right, some, okay, even if it's, it's not a fine because a fine, you'd have to go to court with a fine, you know. If you don't turn up at court, they just send the bailiffs around. You don't go to prison for not paying a parking fine. They just come after them purely after the money, not after you. You know, they're after, after the money. They come, they'll come and take someone's car, which it's funny that you could come after someone's car, but yet in Magna Carta it says that you can't take your car from you. So I don't even know how they can do that after 1967 either. So I, I as far as I'm concerned, um, they're screwed because it, it, it goes. And it, I think everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. It's not right. You know, all these letters and fines and, and all this blackmail and huge amounts of money, you know. Um, it's just like, you know, cast the fishing net out, you know, go fishing. Um, and, and even when you do go to court, you know, some people succeed. But, you know, um, I think a lot of those, um, a lot of the legislation has been used and, you know, they've got these stipendary magistrates in there who aren't legally trained. They're all volunteers. Apparently they're impaired, you know, unless you get a district judge. And then, you know, I got a district judge, you know, throw the book at him. We don't even know about parliamentary privilege, you know. I can throw the book at him and I'll throw that, you know, um, throw that, you know, Thomas Erskine May book at him, you know. Oh, uh, uh, privileges, it doesn't exist. There's no such thing. Is this a stipulandary magistrate here? Are you trained in law? What are you doing in this court, you know? Um, <laughs> what are you doing in this courtroom? Where's the district judge? You know, you won't do any better with him, you know. Was just chuck this, you know, throw this fucking Thomas Erskine May book at his head. There's no such thing as privilege or indemnity. It doesn't exist, you know. You, what's the word? Um, I always forget this word. It was um, delusional, you know. Are you delusional? Well, what's this then? What's the fucking Erskine May book? You know, it's the gold standard of parliament. This, this is a, the go-to book of Minister MPs and ministers of parliament, you know, fucking district judge, supposed to be trained in law, you know, you end up being in the, you know, he might as well be Patrick Gibbs um, KC, you know, you might as well be King's Counsel for all, you know, he, you know, he's standing in the courtroom, you know, I feel like Patrick Gibbs, you know, hmm, it's like deja vu, you know, why do I feel like Patrick Gibbs KC? Can I go seek counsel? I need to seek counsel, you know? Let me, I, I need to seek counsel. Well, you can go to Timbuktu, but you'll get the same answer. <laughs> so, I don't need to go to Timbuktu. I've got a Skin May book, first edition. There's 25 editions of this, and I only need the first one, you know? 